to the prison cell, Hester is in an alarming state of nervous frenzy, and her child is writhing in convulsions of pain. In the evening, the jailer brings to the cell a physician, announces Roger Chillingsworth. Roger Chillingsworth. He is the man in the crowd whose presence had so alarmed Hester. Although Hester fears his intentions, he administers to the baby some medicine, which almost immediately eases its pain and allows it to sleep. Hester then, still fearing him, is persuaded to drink a sedative, which he has prepared, after which the two sit and talk intimately and sympathetically, each of them accepting a measure of the blame for the situation which has developed. It was my fault. No, no, it was my fault. No, no, it was my fault. No, really, it was my fault. No, it was my fault. Well, maybe it was your fault. How does my lead, a man like me? Injured hu husband seeks no revenge against Hester, but he's determined to discover the man who has violated his marriage. I'm, I'm determined to discover who's the man who violated our marriage. I can't tell you that. Chillingsworth huh. then makes what appears to be a reasonable request that if Hester is going to conceal the identity of her lover, she should also keep his, her husband's identity a secret. If you're going to conceal the identity of your lover, you must keep my identity a secret too. He promises not to take her life. <laughs> he warns that if she fails to keep the secret, she should fear for her lover's safety. Hester takes an oath to keep the sec his secret, though she expresses fear that it may prove the ruin of her soul. To this, he almost replies, No, not thy soul. Not thy soul. No, this is. Did you say something, Paul? There's a letter in the suit of armor? Oh. The group of men approaching include Governor Bellingham, the Reverend Don Wilson, the Reverend Arthur Dunsdale, and Roger Schillinger, who since the story's opening has been living in Boston as Dunsdale's friend and physician. The governor, shocked at Pearl's vain and immodest costume, challenges Hester's fitness <laughs> to raise a child in a proper Christian way. It's the Reverend Mr. Wilson to test Pearl's knowledge of the Catechism. Although Hester has taught her much more about religion than most other three-year-olds would know, Pearl deliberately pretends ignorance. In answer to the very first question, Who made thee? Who made thee? She replies that she was not made, but was plucked by her mother off the bush of wild roses that grew by the prison door. Horrified, the governor and Mr. Wilson are ready to take Pearl out of Hester's hands immediately. Hester protests with emotion approaching violence that God has given her Pearl and that she will not give her up. She appeals to Dinsdale to speak up for her, hand over his heart. He does not speak so eloquently that he persuades the governor and Mr. Wilson that Hester should be allowed to keep Pearl, whom God has given her as both a blessing and a reminder of her sin. Hester should be allowed to keep Pearl, whom God has given her as a blessing and a reminder of her sin. Chilling has been smiling slightly, smiling slightly, remarks, You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. Pearl, momentarily solemn, caresses Dinsdale's hand and receives from the minister a furtive kiss on the head. As she skips laughing down the hall, <laughs> Chillingworth raises the question, Would it be beyond a philosopher's research, think ye gentlemen, to analyze that child's nature and <coughs> promise to make and mold to give a shrewd guess at the father? Chillingworth, since first appearing in the community, has been always seized by the townspeople. Not only because they can well use his services as a physician, but also because of his special interest in their ailing clergyman, Arthur Dinsdale. And, although Dinsdale protests that he needs no medicine, he agrees to put his health in Chillingsworth's hands. The two begin spending much time together. The two begin spending much time together. Some say a little too much. She has seen a dim sale. 
With while his life remained strong, his nerve and moral force seemed to have been completely destroyed. In the face of her subsequent behavior, the public memory of her initial sin has been dimmed, and the letter R, which originally stood for failing to recycle, is said by the hand for rabies. Some even attribute this to the embroidered letter a supernatural power to protect its wearer. Seeing Chillingworth, Heather sends Pearl away to play in the water. As she talks with Chillingworth, Hester is shocked at the change which has occurred in him over the past seven years. He has been transformed into a devil. Just that, as Dimdale's physician, he should receive credit for keeping the minister alive. But when Hester suggests that Dimsdale would have been better off dead, Dimsdale would have been better off dead, Chillingsworth admits, with a kind of fierce pride, to his inhuman torture of the minister. I admit to my inhuman torture of the minister. Hester cries that she is as guilty as Dimsdale. I am as guilty as Dimsdale! She pleads for mercy, asking to be freed from her promise concerning the physician's identity. I plead for mercy! I'm asking to be freed from my promise of your identity! At this, despite the wide chasm between the two, Chillingworth and Hester share a moment of mutual pity. And, as for telling Dimsdale his secret, Chillingworth says that Hester may do it as she wishes. You may do it as you wish. Dimsdale walks along the shore through the woods. Go <laughs> whenever you want to. Due to Catholic lobbying, the book, The Scarlet Letter, has now been banned. Hundreds died, thousands left homeless. This just in. Buckley has been shot. News at 11. We now return you to your readily scheduled programming. I can't believe it. Due to extraneous circumstances, the production of this movie has been canceled. We're sorry. Hey, I know someone who can help you with that. What? You're... Never mind. That's great. It starts with an earthquake. Birds and snakes and airplanes. Many persons not afraid. I am a hurricane. Listen to yourself. Turn the world to the zombies. Dummies turn your own knees. Speed it up and not speak. Grant no strength. Nothing that is supposed to clatter with fear. Fight down. High fire in the fire. That he persuades the governor and Mr. Wilson, so eloquently that he persuades the governor and Mr. Wilson that Hester should be allowed to keep him. He does not speak. Speak. He does not speak. So eloquently he does not speak. So eloquently that he persuades. You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. A strange earnestness. Speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. 
Friend oh. is a strange earnestness. Speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. A strange earnestness. Speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. Pearl. While his intellect remained strong, his nerve and moral force seemed to have been <laughs> completely destroyed. <laughs> Hester is shocked at the change she has seen in Dimsdale. With, while his intellect remained strong, his nerve and moral force seemed to have been completely destroyed. <laughs> In the face of the subsequent behavior, the mother's memory of her initial sin has been dimmed. Special bulletin. Due to extreme the Catholic lobby... Don't, don't talk. Special bulletin. Due to Catholic lobbying, the book, The Scarlet Letter, has now been banned. Hundreds died, thousands left homeless. This is in. The book, the scroll letter. <laughs> I had it, I had it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just go, just go. Okay. Okay. Due to Catholic lobbying. What? Special, okay, okay. 